see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car in the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car in the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh, I've been on the flex since flex zone. Neighborhood all in your eardrums. I ain't never scared like. All right, let's get this blower off real quick. Do it. Anytime I take this blower off, I always do it with a engine hoist because I'm always by myself. And it's literally a pain to get this out because you can't detach the blower from the intake itself. So it has to come out as one unit. But we've already got it all out, got it pulled. I'm gonna straighten some things up, make it look a little bit nicer. But just a little tip, it's the easiest way of doing it. Just get your little strap, run around the backside of it on the snout, tie it up. Comes out real easy. Old to the new. Hell yes. Took about three, four weeks to get this thing. It's expected. We've already got the top of the box open. Let's go ahead and pop her open. This thing weighed 85 pounds. Crazy. The guy was struggling to get this thing off the FedEx truck. It's pretty funny. They package it up pretty good though. Looks like this is all. Save that for shipping the other blower out whenever somebody buys it, hopefully. That's for sale, boys. 2,800 bucks or best offer. Got a, it's like a throttle body probably in this box slate off here. Got an s &B filter, which we'll probably be changing out because I think Cobra Engineering has got some new, a new inlet coming. And it'll use a little bit different filter possibly. I think he's gonna go with something that's bigger. Let's see what's in here. Not sure yet. There she is in all her beauty. Can't wait to get this thing out. I wanna jump off the phone real quick and grab everything on this box, be a lot quicker. I don't know where I left off last, but the uh, Whipple is out of the box finally. We're gonna check it out real good. I've already done some measuring versus the 3.4. There's some distinct differences already, as in the obvious is going to be the ginormous throttle body. It's not as wide, it's not as long, but the girth is better. And you know what she says? She loves the girth, not the length. And that's what Whipple done. So I'll put in a little clip from where Justin Starkey was talking on his Kenny Bell versus the 265 because he don't want to go against this possibly. Which I have no beats with that, no beef with that because the 265 is a badass blower and I absolutely love it. Uh, but as you know, I did go with this. But anyways, he was talking about how the the length kind of interferes with the inside of the flow and how it goes and all that good stuff. I'll just insert that clip. And I wanted to talk about between these two different superchargers is the inlet system, specifically the throttle body and the turn behind the blower. The VMP Gen 3R uses the stock throttle body bolt pattern, and we have our VMP 163R throttle body. So the stock throttle body bolt pattern, that's important because it takes a wide variety of throttle bodies. You can pick one that's appropriate for your power level and that your tuner is comfortable with. Everything from our twin blade series to our medium sized mono blade and the big puppy right here, the 163R. Our inlet has a very refined swooping design. We take this right here and we funnel all the air right into the supercharger rotors. There's a lot going on here in a small package. Even though this is a stock throttle body bolt pattern, this opening's huge, this whole elbow is huge, and it does what it needs to do in terms of getting air into the supercharger. This system uses a 168 millimeter throttle body. Now, 168 is misleading because it's just the width. It's not the height or any combination thereof. We got away from calling throttle bodies based on millimeter sizes, unless it's a twin blade, because on a single blade, it really doesn't tell you anything. So our throttle body sizing system is actually square inches. We know this throttle body is 17.7 square inches. The VMP 163R is 16.3. We went slightly smaller for a very, very specific reason. When you have an opening this big on the supercharger and you have to turn the air into the rotors, you run into huge roadblocks like this big hairpin turn. A good percentage of the throttle body opening is obstructed right here by this. We sized the VMP 163R throttle body 
to provide enough airflow, but not to drive your tuner nuts. So just like Mr. Starkey just stated right there, the reason why they went to a shorter throttle body versus what the uh, Kenny Bell did, which is what Whipple has done now between their Gen 2 and Gen 5, where they've went to a shorter throttle body, but they actually went taller to get that girth going on. And you know how she likes that girth. You get more girth on it, you can get more air in it. And by shortening it up, you get that nice swooping area instead of that nice, instead of that real tight turn, like Mr. Starkey was talking about. Now you ain't got that. So Whipple one up again on the VMP and the Kenny Bell. And I ain't got no beef with neither one of them. I like them both, but there you go. That's what it's all about. Now back to the video. So what they've done is obviously opened this all up and made it a roval, a little bit more oval and a little bit more round. So it makes it the roval, if that makes any sense. But it's gonna help the flow into the rotors a lot better. They've raised the back of the blower up right here. They've actually raised this portion from the ground up at a half inch and added that half inch to the top and then brought it all the way around to the side here. And in this case right here in this area, it's totally different to feed the rotors, which uh, I believe is all done to disperse the air more to the sides of the rotors and, to, and more direct. So it's got a better even flow. I don't know if this blower sits any lower or not than the other one, but for some reason it does look like it sits a little bit lower with this base plate on. I'm not sure if that's true or not. The other thing that I was doing on my other blower was back here on these bypasses, I believe they've changed these nowadays. These are more of a lower vacuum deal. I think they crack uh, at about two inches of vacuum and are fully open around six inches of vacuum. Whereas the old 3-4 Whipple, uh, my car only pulled six, seven inches of vacuum and it really was kind of finicky on that. I'm thinking that the old one uses quite a bit more. I do know that if you go down here and pull on the lever to open and close it on the 3-4 Whipple, it's way stronger. That's why I used to run a L&M vacuum. Let me see if I can find that. I got it somewhere. Oh, it's right here. Boom, right there. As you can tell, all they've done is went in here and drilled out the back portion here, taking that little spring that they got inside there and then used some, uh, what looks like pipe fitting and glued it in there to seal it off. And that's all they've done. And that thing right there opens as soon as there's any vacuum, like a half inch and that bitch is wide open, which is awesome. I loved it on my other one. It helps keep the heat down on the blower as well by doing that. So this thing came with the 3.625 blower as you've already seen, cause I've already talked about it. But we ain't gonna be running a 3.625 pulley, I don't believe. We might start out with it, but. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you pulley you think I should start out with on this thing. I'm thinking at least a 3.5 to get me around 20, 21 pounds. I mean, why start out any less than that, to be honest. I'm not sure how good the motor is going to hold up because we do know that it has a ring sealing issue, but we're going to send it until we get the other engine built. Other than that, that's really all I've noticed different on a blower. The uh, the ribs are obviously, you know, changed up than the other one. The whole the whole case is different. I think the rotors are bigger in size. I think they've went taller and wider. Obviously, when you make it taller, it's going to make the rotor wider, and they've shortened them down a little bit. I think that's what I heard uh, Dustin Whipple talk about. And then they went to a different rotor count and I can't think of what it is right now. I'll put uh, somewhere here, there, over here, you know, generally in this area. About what that is, I'll look it up so that way you guys know. Uh, yeah, that's all I got guys. I do have another part for the car that's ready to go on. Let me go grab that real quick. Magic can hear what he is. This is going to be my new radiator fill neck slash cat. It's going to go on my radiator. I got to weld it on. That way I don't have to have that uh, reservoir tank like the factory stuff does. And I'm going to finish up my coolant mod that I got going on. If you didn't see that, you know, maybe I'll add that video at the end here. Uh, so we'll get this welded on and we'll be ready to go. We're one step closer. I am going to change the fuel rails around a little bit. Uh, we're going to run some nice four rail or four uh, some four fittings off the back here. We're going to come up and do like 
a 180 and we're gonna send the lines back up. So if the rails are sitting here, around yonder, it's gonna come up, go right back, go around the back side, same thing over here, up, go in, go under, and then put the regulator in the back corner. That way everything's nice and neat out of the way. So that's all I got for you guys today on this video. Until next time, we'll talk with you guys later. Peace out.